This is Sean with Gate City. I'm on a job today in Greensboro. And what we're doing today is we're gonna be tearing out a concrete driveway. So I've got my one dump truck here. I've got the beak. And we need to tear this walkway out here. And I've got Miguel with me and he is going to cut around a couple of these things. So we need to cut around this drainage pipe here. Also, this, uh, uh, the, the concrete contractor is subbing me out for this work. So I want to cut along here and make sure that I don't damage any of the old concrete because we're going to be replacing the driveway. Same thing up against the foundation here. Miguel is going to cut along here and try to minimize any collateral damage we have. I also brought the, the mini with the breaker on it because there's not really a good place to start here. And so I think what I want to do is maybe break up some of this here and then come in with the beak and then I can get going that way. So we got some leaf people here too doing some cleanup. But that's what we're working on today. The first thing we're working on here is getting the cuts along the foundation. And it's you never know if the, the old concrete is up against the foundation or if it's under it or somehow attached to it. And so it's just a good practice to cut before you start ripping stuff out. We're trying really hard to preserve all the landscaping and stuff here. So instead of just coming in from the back and grabbing this with the beak, I think I want to try to bust up some of this here, maybe like the, the stuff that's already broken up and get under it from within the, the main area of the concrete instead of messing up the edges. So let me give that a try. We just got this area cut here against the wall, so I'm gonna come in and see if I can do anything with the beak with this slab. So here we go.
Okay, everything came out of there. I didn't damage anything. Cutting that relief cut right there means that, that the big slab and this little piece here up against the part we want to save, there's a there's a opening there. And so the two can move against each other. So at first I thought this was part of the stuff and I was like, oh no, I screwed it up. But that's what we cut. I think they do all right with the, with the big one, but. Yeah. All right, we just got two truckloads lifted up and I forgot to tell you what time it was. So it's 10.54 now. So this is where we're at. So I just wanna see how well this beak does for, this is about 44 yards. So there we go. We're gonna jump on it. And of course, Jared's running relays over to the landfill, the recycling place. And he just got back with an empty truck. When you're beaking a driveway like this, you have to be real, real careful and move kind of slowly with these big slabs because they're so heavy. And compared to blowing up a driveway with a jackhammer, it feels like you're moving in slow motion because when you blow up a driveway with, with a jackhammer, there's like millions of pieces everywhere and they're always moving around. And when you're stacking and slabbing like this, you're, you're placing them gingerly on the truck and kind of like positioning them and it feels like it moves slower with the motions of loading the truck but the truck gets loaded in minutes going from a complete undisturbed slab to the truck is loaded in just a few minutes one problem with the beak is if you're trying to pry a big slab like i'm doing here up against old concrete that you're leaving in place so if i were to try to pry this up there's a good chance I could chip the garage floor underneath the garage door right there. And so instead of trying to pry up in this case, I'm gonna to try to pull this slab away from the old concrete and then I'm gonna pry it up and break it up. And so you do have to have a little bit of finesse when you're up against existing things that you don't wanna mess up. Once you get the slab away from what you're preserving, you can go ahead and slab and stack it like you normally would. Another problem with the beak is it goes so fast that the, there's no way the dump truck, even when you have two dump trucks going, it can't keep up with you. And so the recycling center was about seven minutes away and Jared was hustling and he was going and dumping and coming back. And I was still way faster than him. And so when you blow a driveway into a million pieces with a jackhammer, you always have something to do. So when, when you fill the truck up, it takes you forever to jackhammer the next truckload. And so you're always, you feel like you're always doing something. With the beak, it just goes so fast, I have nowhere to put all the, the concrete that it rips up because it's so fast.
I just finished loading a truck, and so while that truck is sitting full and I'm, we're waiting for the other truck, I am just basically starting to break up the next slab, and what I'll do is I'll start to stack that, and I'll start making piles, and so when the truck gets back, an empty truck gets back, I can then grab the piles that I've already made and load it up really quickly. So that does give me something to do while I'm waiting for the truck to get back. It is 102 and we're a little over halfway finished. I would, actually, I'd say maybe like three quarters of the way finished. This apron right here was really, really thick. You see how thick that is. So luckily, our recycling site is only a few minutes away. That makes it really, really quick. There's a sewer clean out plug right here in the middle of the driveway. And so I was really, really cognizant of making sure not to disrupt it too bad with the machine. And so once I got the concrete removed all around it, then Miguel and I went in there and really carefully broke up the concrete around that sewer clean out pipe. And I, I just really didn't want to break it off of there because that would just be creating more problems. And so that's what we're working on here. And we were able to get it broken apart or get the concrete broken apart from around it and not damage the pipe. So that worked out well.
pretty delicate work getting this walkway out of here without hitting this retaining wall or that little retaining wall. So I'm going to try to get this last piece right here, see how we do. The apron right here was one solid piece and it was about six all the way down to about 10 inches thick. And as you can see here, my machine just will not lift it. And there's no cracks in it already, so I, it's hard to get it broken up. And so I tried for quite a while to get this thing to lift up and break. But how do you all think I could use physics to break this thing if I can't lift it? Let me know in the comments. Since lifting it wasn't working, what we're doing here is I'm lifting up just a corner of it and Miguel is placing a piece of concrete chunk underneath there. And then, as you may have guessed, I'm about to use the weight of the machine to just drive on top of it now that it's propped up and it'll crack right here as I get the, the full weight of the machine on there. There it goes. Jared's off to recycling.
This is a little bit different because we're only doing the demo here and we're not gonna be putting the concrete back. And so there's still money to be made in concrete tearing out and apparently there's not a lot of people doing tear outs. And so I may be getting more into this. There's a, not a whole lot of exposure here. You're basically just taking it out. And so a lot less exposure, a little bit less money, but it's, it's easy, quick, in and out. I don't know. What do y'all think about that? What do y'all think about doing tear outs only? Let me know. I'm back out here. The concrete guys came and did their thing and take a look at what they did. So they added on these two stamped aprons. So we got both of those. And they added a tan color to the concrete. They cut all these really nice joints in here. The homeowners are super, super happy. And they did it all in one and a half days. So let me get the drone up in the air and see if we can take a look. This was a little bit different in doing just the demo part of a concrete job. And so this was one of my concrete buddies and he had asked me if I would do the demo for him. He has another crew that does his concrete work. And so this really worked out really well for me because like I said in the video, you go in, you get the concrete out and you're completely finished with that part. It also worked out really well for my buddy because our crew was able to go out there on, it happened to be a Thursday and then his crew came out on Friday and finished up on Saturday. And so the homeowner was only without a driveway for three days for the most part. And so that also worked out really well for my buddy, for his client, for his customer. The other thing I wanted to talk about was the beak, of course. And I had talked to the, the beak people probably about a year or so before I actually bought it. And I talked to them and and I didn't really have a use for it back then, but I really liked it. I'd seen it in use before, and I really thought it was a well-designed, well-thought-out piece of equipment. And so, like a year later, I texted him back and ended up ordering one. And then you all saw the Beak video that I made, and I sent them that video. And they were very impressed with that video. So they said of all the videos that they've had about the Beak, that was right up there with one of their favorites. So that was really cool, too. And that beak, of course, makes really, really quick work out of demoing that concrete. They call it stacking and slabbing, or slabbing and stacking, one of the two. But you pretty much see how it works. It just, you pick up the big slabs and go. There's no jackhammer noise for the neighbors. There, it's a lot, lot easier on the machine, all those good things. So I'll put a link to the beak video at the end of this video. So let, let me know what you all think about doing demo only for concrete work. I think there might be a niche for it. So, all right, thanks for watching. Thanks again for watching. If you have found any value in my channel, you can support the channel and you know what to do here. You can also check the links in the description below and you can become a Patreon or you can buy me a coffee. Okay, thanks again for watching.